Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco, and today we're talking all things knives. Uh, as usual, this is episode 171, and uh, these week, uh, these uh, midweek supplemental shows are um, my opportunity to do all of the talking, to unbottle all of the knife things I wanted to tell my friends who don't care, and my coworkers who don't care, and my family, and my wife who don't care. And uh, it's my opportunity to actually uh, unbottle this stuff and tell people who do care. So <laughs> here you are. And today uh, we'll be talking about my 10 most carried tactical knives in 2020. And what I mean by that is my top 10 front right pocket knives, my main carry knives. They just so happen to be modern tactical mostly in uh, in form and format. But, uh, you know, I, I don't use them in a tactical sense. I, I cut sandwiches with them and errant threads on shirt collars, that kind of thing. But still, they do it uh, wonderfully and uh, with authority. And uh, I love their designs. I love how they carry. And, uh, well, I just love what they are. So we're going to talk about those. And then in subsequent weeks, we're going to talk about the most carried slip joints and most carried, uh, well, I think probably just stick to that, uh, this and slip joints, because I don't carry large fixed blades much unless I'm doing yard work. So maybe we'll do a yard work 10 most carried, but that might get a little uh, redundant and boring. So uh, we'll stick to 10 most top carried tactical knives today, next week, slip joints. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Cold Steel news uh, because a video has come out. Uh, Lynn Thompson uh, put out a video addressing his fans uh, and talking about the sale to GSM. We're going to talk about that for a minute. Uh, in Life Knife News, uh, Knife Life News, we're going to talk about, uh, as well as the Cold Steel thing, we're going to talk about Knife News because, you know, I get a lot of my stories from Knife News and I love them and I love Ben Schwartz's writing. He is awesome. Uh, every year they put out a reader's choice poll and they they ask questions like, what's the best, best fixed EDC? What's the best fixed kitchen knife, slip joint, blah, blah, blah. And some of those results are in, and man, I got to say, they're, I don't want to say disappointing, but they seem to be narrow. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, and that's a, I have a little tip of the week, something something I suggest uh, that I've been doing that I want to maybe suggest to those of you with uh, larger collections start doing, and I'll see what you see what you think about that. Uh, so anyway, let's get into it, and we're going to start as usual with a pocket check, and that's a great opportunity, a subtle and and uh, opportunity for me to show off a knife that I have and that I happen to be carrying. And today I am carrying the uh, Terrell Todd slash Zelric Forty Two purchased. Strider SMF. The SMF is the larger of, of the format. You can tell by the three body screws. Uh, this is a concealed carry SMF with a hollow grind. Beautiful hollow grind. He put an awesome, uh, Zell put a great uh, uh, mirror edge finish on it. It's very sharp. S30V steel. Special, um, what is that? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, gray tactical, I think it is. Uh, they put, they made that, uh, aftermarket um, stop there. And uh, so I bought this from Zell after he was uh, coming on Thursday Night Knives somewhat regularly. And uh, I asked him if he had a Strider to sell and lo and behold, he did. And what a beautiful one. I've always loved these concealed carry models uh, because uh, they're less blocky. I like the longer blade, the bigger blade, but in the, in the standard Lego version, that's the squared off version of the Strider. It's just a little bit too blocky for the pocket, but this concealed carry is thinner overall. And as you can see, it's contoured. So um, that's a really, really great uh, knife. And I got an excellent deal, uh, you know, I guess like a friend deal um, for it. And I'm really, really psyched about it. Uh, so I was carrying this today. I've had it for a while, but it sort of got on the back burner uh, as other knives came through. And then uh, my big elbows, I keep bumping into stuff. And then uh, I also carried my uh, sow belly trapper in tobacco bone from Rough Rider. Now, uh, this knife, uh, I, I had 
didn't even know I was missing it, but I was missing it. And then I pulled out, I'm making some uh, paintings for my daughters for Christmas. Uh, one of them is getting a mermaid and the other one is getting an owl. And, uh, you know, I used to do a lot of painting, haven't in a while, but I had put this away in a sketch. Uh, I have a, a bag full of sketch equipment, uh, pencils and stuff. And I like to sharpen my pencils with knives, obviously. And I had this in there and I forgot I put it in there. And uh, I just love the spay blade on this knife. The Rough Rider Sow Belly Trapper is a handsome knife. And, and I don't know if it's the whole tobacco bone series, but this thing is just incredibly made. Really, really top notch. Better than most of my cases, better than all my cases, or or at least in the same uh, realm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, today I got the Strider. That's uh, on the expensive end. And then I have the Rough Rider on the inexpensive end. And both are amazing. Uh, and that's what a knife junkie is, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter the knife. It could be the $3 Walmart bait knife uh, that I'm fond of. Um, thrusting into cardboard. That's a great knife too. Even though it's a real cheap piece of crap, I still love it and it's still a useful tool. So calling it crap is unfair. So uh, are you a knife junkie? Let us know on the listener line, 724-466-4487. I want to show off, uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the show, I I'm going to use this opportunity, this platform, if you will, because it's not uh, it's not a show, it's a platform in the 2000 tens and beyond. So I'm going to use this platform to show off uh, the knife I've been showing off over and over, actually for over a year now. Uh, when I first carved it out of AEBL, uh, I showed it off. Look at this awesome unheat treated thing. And then after I spoke with Alex Steingraber on the podcast, uh, who is, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, a lab. He's like a, a professor in the lab uh, working with different steels and figuring out the best way to heat treat them. Uh, I sent him uh, the knife finally. So I showed it off then. He heat treated it beautifully, uh, sent it back to me, and then I've been working on it. And here it is. This is about as done as it's going to be. Uh, I showed this off on Thursday Night Knives the other night. And uh, well, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you here. This, I call this pattern the Virginia Bowie uh, for no other reason except that I live in Virginia. And I think it sounds cool. It sounds a little old timey. It sounds like something that might already exist. And how I define the Virginia Bowie is a full belly. Like there's a little bit of straight right here, but pretty much it's all belly. And then a real long sharpened switch for, for back cutting things. And then there's always a swale right here. And I say always because I made one more and uh, like a mamaluke, I, I forgot to bring it down. Uh, but that's uh, probably my most EDC'd uh, fixed blade of all times. And it's a, just a smaller version of this. Uh, but what I did differently on this uh, was pretty much full flat grind it. So it's it's uh, it's pretty darn sharp. It's 530 seconds of an inch thick. So it's, it's thinner than your standard quarter inch Bowie. And for a minute, I'm going to blame things on my equipment, but I, I use a Craftsman, you know, a Sears bought 42 inch by two inch belt grinder. Okay. It's, it's one speed and that, that speed is very fast. And, uh, it's, it's a, it's for sharpening axes and tools and stuff, but it's not so much for, um, the fine kind of grinding you do, uh, with knife making. And I am not saying that I am capable of that kind of fine grinding. I do not have technique. Uh, but but frequently when I use that tool, I I create real deep gouges with the with the belts that I use, and I use progressively smaller belts. But I just don't have the chops or the practice down to get rid of that kind of that kind of. You see those grind lines in there, so those kind of stick in my craw a little bit. And yes, I could hand rub it until they're gone, but then I start to worry about. Um, and this is maybe something I need to address with some of the actual professionals I speak with, but. I'm worried that if there's too much of a gouge here and I, I worry with the sandpaper right here, that it's gonna be wavy. So you gotta do the whole thing. I don't know if I lack the patience or what, but anyway, uh, something I'm, it, it's very sharp, okay? And it, uh, it hacks through limbs nicely. And that back edge is more wedge-like, but it also comes to a pretty keen. So I'm, I'm thinking of this as a sort of a fighting knife and it's just kind of fun to do so. It's got black canvas micarta and purple liners. And uh, I really like this handle. I like this handle style. It's kind of a Moran handle style. And this swale here uh, 
lets you choke back a little bit and uh and and leverage it as a chopper so anyway uh showing it off i like it gotta make a a uh uh, sheath for it now. I'll make a Kydex sheath and I'll, I'll ask my brother if maybe he'll make a leather sheath for me too. And uh, then I'll just carry it around the house, you know. <laughs> can't can't take it out. But uh, there you go. The Virginia Bowie. Uh, and I call it the Liberator. The Virginia Bowie is the style of Bowie. The Liberator is the model. And it's named kind of half after the B24 Liberator, but also it's kind of supposed to be a, a little bit witty. Like it's going to liberate you from a bad situation. All right. Now you're like, yeah, I got that, Bob. You don't have to explain it. So <clears throat> anyway, if you want to help out the show, if you think that what we do here is valuable, check us out on Patreon. Uh, we have a great group of, of people over there. We have three tiers of support. Uh, you can support us at a $3 per month level, a $5 per month level or a $10 per month level. We have we have cute little names for each. The $3, the traditional junkie. The $5, the tactical junkie. And the $10 is the gentleman junkie. Of course, after different types of knives. And uh, at the $10 level, the most vaunted and exciting level, uh, each month you get um, entered into a monthly knife drawing. And we give away a knife here. And um, I have word that the next knife we give away will be a traditional. I know I kind of hinted at that last time, but this time, this time it's going to be for real. So if you want a cool traditional knife to come your way for uh, possibly come your way uh, for help supporting the show, join up as a gentleman junkie. Uh, so otherwise, uh, we have something cool for you here. Uh, before we get into the state of my collection and talk about a couple of new knives that came across my desk and came into my collection, I'd like to a plug the listener line and b play you something that we got from the listener line this is the kind of stuff we're interested in and we want to make all sorts of different kind of montages and uh just play them for you in any case uh today we have uh this jim i'm carrying a serge panchenko cleaver slip joint the walk and talk on this thing is insane so that is a knife that I've been dying to get my hands on. Serge Panchenko just came out with a sort of mid-tech line of slip joints. Uh, one with a cleaver style blade is this gentleman who next time uh, call us back and leave your name too. But uh, uh, cleaver blade, drop point blade, and a worn cliff. And they're just, uh, man, they look beautiful. They're very simple. And uh, he's got a great logo. It's etched in the side or uh, embossed in the side. Uh, the handle and uh, they just look like great little slip joints so thanks for calling in and letting us know i think maybe we have another one uh, that came in yesterday i'm not sure keep them coming uh, i'd like to gather a, a bunch and uh and do you know just for my own edification perhaps and for everyone's enjoyment i put out a, a little montage of everyone's pocket checks so there you have it let's get on to the state of the collection so uh rob bixby guest on the show awesome guy uh, you know him as Apostle P on, uh, on YouTube. He does his weekly knife sales. Uh, he does them on Thursday nights, uh, before Thursday night knives. So you can, you can wet your whistle and buy a knife on, uh, on Rob's channel, Apostle P. And he's always got sweet knives and always a bunch of them, like 30. He usually has about 30 knives or something like that. And uh, buy a great knife from him, and you can either opt to have him put his edge on it or not. And then you can come over to Thursday Night Knives and, and show it off and talk about it. Uh, but in any case, uh, I checked in. Uh, when Rob doesn't totally sell out on Thursday nights, which he usually does, people usually buy everything he has, he'll put up a video a couple of days later, I think it's like on Sunday, and he'll say, price drops between now and Thursday, price drops on the, on the knives that were in the videos last time. And there, were, there was a clutch of GECs as there usually are, but this time they were my one of my favorite patterns, uh, the 14. Well, that's not a pattern, I don't think, but uh, model, uh, frame, the 14. He had uh, three of them. One, one of them was a spear point and pen blade with the knife bright. Uh, that's that uh, glow in the dark sort of um, Kiranite. And then he had one uh, that was also two blades, and I can't remember what the configuration was. And this third one, which I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe was on the reduced list. It was a moral imperative for me to rescue this from mediocrity and put it into my collection of GECs with this beautiful autumn bone cover. I just am such a sucker for this 
autumn bone. Let's see if we can get it on the on the knife cam. <laughs> Whoa, I just chopped chop my, my uh, mic in half. Well, uh, unlike, I'm, I'm coming over to the other, uh, the other camera here, Jim. Unlike my other 14, which is a 2018 production in the same autumn jig bone, this has more of a peach seed jigging, those real uh, small jiggings that are sort of uh, parallel to one another. This one was two years prior in 2016, the uh, the 14 and the 15 are, are a popular uh, frame size for them or frames for them. They they're the same shape, but the 14 is smaller, uh, so they come out with them somewhat regularly. Uh, but goodness gracious! So this was this uh, 2016, and they treated first of all the jigging is different. It's a little bit bigger here, and uh, they polished the bone in a different way. This has a, I don't know, it's got, it seems like a thicker polish or just a, a more polishy, polished polish. But then I look at the blade and I see that machine cut swedge. That's what they call that. And that long pole. And I think this is uh, one of their higher, I think, yeah, this is a titiute. So I, I, I'm pretty sure this is a, a, a dressed up 14 with that blade and that those, uh, shiny covers. So anyway, I had to uh, buy this. This was my first, um, I'm looking for a cloth. I got to get rid of that fingerprint. Uh, this was my first experience buying from uh, the Apostle P. Rob Bixby. It was an awesome buying experience. Uh, I, I know everyone who's listening to this has secondary market buying experience. And, and it's usually pretty good for me on Blade Forums. That's where I do most of it uh, these days. Um, it's pretty well vetted, you know. Uh, every once in a while, you'll come across someone sketchy, but you learn how to avoid those people pretty much. Uh, with Rob, I want it. You send them, it, it, you know, you send them payment within a half hour. It's on its way to you. And uh, if you have him uh, sharpen it, it takes an extra day if you're one of the first six people. So definitely check out the, the uh, Apostle P knife sales. I mean, and it's not just traditionals. I mean, it runs the gamut from, from custom knives to big fixed blades to to all different kinds of everything, everything, uh, except for swords and war hammers and stuff like that. So definitely check out uh, uh, Apostle P. Love that guy. I mean, Rob Bixby, he's awesome. Okay, so next I want to talk about a knife I bought. It was totally unexpected. Uh, wandering through Home Depot, I always go to the knife section, see what they're selling, see what kind of knives they're selling at Home Depot for people who are buying knives that use them. And it turns out... They're selling this. <laughs> Look at that. That's for drywall. Now, for those who cannot see what I'm holding up, I'm holding up a dagger. This looks like a large version of the SOG Pentagon. Uh, the small fixed blade uh, It was a boot dagger at one time. I'm not sure if they're still making it, but it was double-edged and one entire side, it's a dagger. One entire side is has a very aggressive um, uh, serration pattern on it. Uh, the handle, so what I'm holding up is a Klein Tools uh, um, drywall knife. I call it a drywall dagger because that's what this is. I mean, okay, think of yourself, think of it like this. Uh, well, no, 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 I'm not even gonna say that. So uh, this has a great rubbery and ergonomic handle. It's got this butt cap. It's got a, uh, a half inch thick metal butt cap, presumably steel hardened for hammering onto. So you can pound this through through drywall and carve out whatever kind of piece you need to do. I think, I'm not sure. I'm not a, I'm not a contractor or a drywall guy. I don't know what you use this for in drywalling. I know what you use this for in the rest of the world outside of drywalling. I mean, if you look at this, this is, there's, there's nothing about this. This isn't a dagger. This is a dagger. <laughs> and I love it because I live in a state where you can't buy daggers. You can't, you know, get them. And there are no knife stores here. Well, there, there are no knife stores in this region. I live in a very domesticated region. Uh, so uh, to walk into Home Depot and see the gnarliest uh, sort of implement of mayhem uh, that you can, you know, hide in your tracksuit, I was shocked. Well, you know, but you can also buy a hatchet and a hammer and all sorts of other pickaxes and all sorts of things there. So, uh, but this to me is particularly weapon-like. And uh, geez, I hope my talking about this doesn't get them to, well, no one's listening to this anyway. So check this out. The Klein Tools 
Home Depot drywall dagger. If you're if you're down on your luck or you only have 15 bucks to spend on a dagger, go to Home Depot, man. I mean, how can you lose? How can you lose with that thing? Uh, so, uh, yeah, there you go. You also get a little, uh, well, cheesy, cheesy little sheath. But, uh, you know, if you're in Home Depot, maybe you have the the skills to to actually make your own sheath anyway. So there you go. All right. Next, uh, I want to talk about this beauty. I'm going to I'm going to put it under the knife cam because I think my camera's better here. But this. OK, so this, as you know is my Emerson Elvia. But would you look at that beautiful burgundy canvas micarta handle and backspacer. Is this not gorgeous? So if you look at this, uh, you'll also see that it's contoured in this direction here. So uh, uh, my good friend, uh, my good online buddy, Tom at uh, Blades and Such on Instagram, you know him from such hits as the CQC 13 with uh, natural canvas tan micarta handles. Okay, Blades and Such is a gentleman on Instagram. His name is Tom, and he specializes in making beautiful handles for knives such as Emerson's, ZT's. I think he does some Spydercos and Benchmade's and lots of other knives, but you got to check him out. It's Blades underscore N underscore Such. And uh, if you have, if now I have a whole collection of Emersons I want to dress up this way. Um, not all of them. I mean, I do like the black G10 on some of them, but this Elvia knife to me is very special because, uh, well, I spoke to the designer, Ed Calderon, on the Knife Junkie podcast. I have spoken with, uh, I've spoken with Ernest Emerson on the Knife Junkie podcast. And so this is a very special knife to me. Plus, uh, Tom from Blades and Such has, has tweaked the handle as, you know, created that beautiful handle for me. And so it's three different people. Uh, uh, actually, Tom is going to be coming on uh, the deep cut. We're going to talk about making scales and such. Um, but this knife now represents three different people that I've developed a relationship with in this knife world that is valuable to me. You know, I always kind of scoffed being a being a Gen X or maybe it's a Gen X thing. I don't know. Being someone born in in, in the early seventies to me, like social media was like, yeah, I, I like watching knife videos, but all this like quote unquote friend stuff is ridiculous. But becoming a part of this knife community online, I have made actual friends and, uh, and, and friendly acquaintances. Not everyone has to be your friend, you know, but I've had awesome conversations with people and, uh, this knife represents three awesome, three awesome relationships. So there you go. Sentimental Italian stuff coming out again. What can I say? Uh, so definitely check out Tom at Blades and Such, and uh, and uh, he's over on Instagram. If you want to check out some great uh, content on YouTube, you have to check out the Knife Junkie uh, uh, channel. It's awesome. You get uh, you get knife reviews. You get um, um, you get uh, these quick takes called uh, collection selections. That's all visual. You get podcasts. You get live uh, Thursday night knives. You get all sorts of stuff. So definitely check out uh, check out YouTube. And actually, now that I'm sitting here just talking about myself, I think maybe from now on, I'll also start plugging other channels I love. Um, so maybe I'll start right here and say Alex's Knife Box. He's been the oldest, dearest friend of this show. And um, you got to check out Alex's content on YouTube and on Instagram. I mean, he's very prolific there, too. But uh, he's been constantly, you know, they talk about uh, Spyderco's uh, constant uh, quality control. Well, he does that with his videos. He's constantly updating his style, his format, and uh, so and it, the kind of knives he covers. Everything from from uh, super high end uh, custom knives that he's worked with knife makers to create, uh, down to great old favorites custom, I mean, not custom, but a great old production favorites. So check out Alex's Knife Box. When you're over there on YouTube, subscribing to the Knife Junkie channel. So on to Knife Life News. I got it right. Knife Life News. So this week, oh man, bombshell dropped here in the knife world, especially for those of us who are fans of implements of mayhem as I, as I used earlier that, I mean, I am not a, a, a mayhem bringer 
You don't see me out in the street rioting or looting. Uh, but uh, I just like tools of, uh, of warfare, especially um, uh, older ones. And there has been one company to stand above all in modern production of ancient weaponry, and that's Cold Steel. And I love them dearly, and I love their products dearly. And uh, we heard this week that after 40 years, uh, they started in 1980, after 40 years, um, Lynn Thompson has sold the company Cold Steel to GSM Outdoors. And GSM Outdoors is a conglomerate of outdoor uh, uh, um, outfitters and, and different kind of uh, uh, makers of different hunting and uh, out, out, outdoorsy equipment. And uh, so they wanted to, presumably they wanted to add the toughest, sharpest knife company to their roster of companies and they acquired Cold Steel. Uh, uh, being a, a uh, well-documented fan of Cold Steel and especially their 100% unique take on modern production knives. And by that, I mean, I mean, come on, who else is making, who else is making a knife like this? Who else is doing that? No one, it doesn't even fit on our screen here. So uh, Cold Steel to me has started with the Tanto back in the late eighties. I, I rem to me, they came on my radar in 87 or 86 or something like that. And so they'd already been around for six years making their Tanto. And what was that? That was a modern American interpretation of an ancient weapon and uh, created for law enforcement, military, and then and then later a, 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 a thriving collector market. They moved from that from, uh, to, I remember they started making the, uh, the Trailmaster, the Bowie. I'm like, oh, what's this? It's not a Tanto. They, they widened their, and then they started making folders. And I have uh, an ancient, I have one of their very, very, very first folders. It was like a keychain Tanto. Uh, now I don't even know where the hell that is. I got to find it now that I'm talking about it. But they went from one model taking Americanized Tanto, and which is arguably Lynn Thompson Americanized the Tanto by putting that, that sharp facet up front um, in, in such a way, in that sort of chisel look. Uh, they went from that model to a, such a huge product line of weapons and tools and outdoors equipment. Uh, but really, I mean, when you think of cold steel, what do you think of first? Very first thing. Yes, of course. You think of this knife here. You think of the Espada. Or you think of uh, a, a warhammer, a modern warhammer, or... One, not one, not two, but three different types of Viking axes you can buy. You can buy a big battle axe, Viking style from them. You can get a small Viking battle axe, or you can get the the uh, what the, the throwing tomahawk, the the, uh, the Nordic throwing tomahawk. I mean, so my point is they've sold themselves to GSM, an outdoors uh, uh, supplier conglomerate. Are they going to be able to continue to make halberds and double-handed Italian uh, swords and 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 all of these things they make, Filipino weapons and battle axes and throwing things. And is that going to fit into the GSM um, roster of products? That has been my big thing. And that's been everybody's big thing, I think. But uh, Lynn Thompson came out with a three-minute video uh, yesterday uh, well, yesterday as we record this, so, um, you know, around uh, in the first week of December 2020, saying, and I'm going to I'm going to pull a couple of quotes here. He says, Andrew Demko and I aren't going anywhere. So he, he sets the whole thing up by saying, um, you know, he doesn't say anything about I've been in this game for 40 years. I'd like to kind of chill, uh, which maybe he doesn't, because what he says is he sold himself to a company that has broader capacity. They have a greater capacity for manufacturing and for sourcing materials and such. And then uh, he goes on to say, Andrew Demko and I aren't going anywhere. And then he says very clearly, we haven't hung up our gloves. We haven't hung up our swords on the wall. We haven't put our knives in our sheaths and we have not locked our guns in their saves. So our safes. So relax about that, he says. And then, so he's basically saying, we're still in the game. We just have a big brother behind us, pushing us forward and giving us the kind of resources we need to really be who we are. 
uh, okay, um, that seems like something you would say for sure. And and you know that that seems like probably the most legitimate reason for doing something like that. You know, uh, if you don't want to just retire and get out of the game, and he has indicated that he does not want to retire and get out of the game. Uh, and then he goes on to make, I got to say, and Lynn Thompson, I know you're not watching this, but I love you, man. I think you're awesome. And that's why I've been courting you for so long to get you on this show. I think you're so awesome. You're doing something no one else is doing. But what was with that weird apology? Oh, that was my stomach. What was with that weird apology, Lynn Thompson? I One thing I love about you, aside from your awesome product line of great knives and things, implements and such. I love your unapologetic stance on things. You're the only one making seven and a half inch folders uh, capable of doing pull-ups on or hacking a pig in half. You're the only one doing that. You're the only one making modern war hammers besides our, our, our JM who, you know, you got you to gotta, RMJ. That's, that's big, big, big custom money. You're the only one doing this stuff aside from cult, cult of Athena. And we're not LARPers. Lynn Thompson. So what was with that weird apology? Sorry if I offended anyone um, and all that stuff. What the hell was that, man? One thing I've loved about you all along is that when people are like, I like Cold Steel and I think they're really tough, but I just don't like their marketing. I'm like, uh, fine. You don't like their marketing, but that's what I like about them. It, and, and I don't know, maybe that's a... Uh, <sighs> Anyway, so he said he goes on to say we're we're headed for a bright new future. And what does that mean? Bright new future. Lynn, are you becoming a communist, Lynn? <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Now I'm trying to antagonize you because I want you to come on the show. I'm dying to talk to you, Lynn Thompson. What was with this weird apology? What's with this sale? Is it 40 years in the biz and now you're ready to ready to cruise? Are you gonna do a special projects thing like Lynn Thompson special projects like in the old days? and move some of these cooler things like the swords and the halberds and the war hammers and the seven and a half inch folders to Lynn Thompson special projects and then have cold steel uh, be the more domestic stuff under CSM with your hunting stuff and your more outdoorsy stuff. Tell us, man, we're dying to know. Hey, tell us on the knife junkie podcast. All right. Well, so that's where I stop. That's where I, that's where I end this little tidbit. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, next is, um, well, Ben Schwartz and his awesome Knife News. I love Knife News. Big, big fan of Knife News. So every year he puts out the annual Reader's Choice poll. And, uh, you know, maybe this happened last year and I didn't notice. But this year, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a glitch in the matrix. That's what it is. It's a glitch. It's a deja vu. Everything is Benchmade or Spyderco now. Uh, so uh, best fixed outdoor blade is the Benchmade Liuku, which uh, is is a um, it's a really good looking knife, you know, um, and I'm sure it's great in the outdoors. But there are so many other outdoor knife companies out there that I'm surprised that Benchmade, who is you know, their, their MTA is flippers, uh, not flippers, but uh, folders, axis lock stuff. Um, yeah, they do some fixed blades here and there. So I was kind of shocked to see that this is what made uh, the best outdoor fixed blade. Maybe it's awesome. Haven't experienced it. Not much of an outdoorsman. Next, we had the Spyderco Nightstick, okay, for best tactical fixed blade. You're going with a Spyderco for best tactical fixed blade. And, and this is not, I'm not impugning Knife News or their readers. I'm just saying it's it just shows a lack of exposure. If you read Knife News a little bit more, you can see that there's more than Benchmade and Spyderco. So this, this is the best fixed tactical blade, um, uh, according to the reader's poll at Knife News, the Spyderco Nightstick, which first of all, let's start with the name. We're talking about a stabby, daggery knife. Uh, if you can't see what I'm looking at, it is double-edged, it's a five inch blade and uh, it is, well, it's not double-edged. It's ground for double-edged, but it's only sharp on one side. So that's what really, that's what really gets me. This is a dagger that's not a dagger. It's just a dagger and look looks only. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dino, um, a dagger in name only. You look at it and it's just like, okay, it's daggery. But they call it the nightstick. This is a, this is a, this is a knife that's not only a, uh, you know, it'd be a good slasher because of that belly. But I mean, this is this is a knife that is uh, uh, purpose-driven to puncture, 
to thrust, to to stab. I, mean, I don't know how else to put it. To to, and they call it a nightstick. What is a nightstick? It's a bludgeon. It is something that is dull that you pound onto something until it stops. This you stick in once and it stops. So I think it's a really misguided name. I think it's a misguided design, though the design is beautiful. All they have to do is get ri rid of their ridiculous little circle carved into the blade. They already have two circles in the handle. Can't they go with those two circles in the handle? Get rid of that circle, put another edge on it, and, and just come on. You don't sell it in a couple of states. But instead, we're just going to single edge this dagger and call it the nightstick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Didn't think I was going to get so animated over this, but come on, people. All right, so best fixed EDC. So this is presumably a fixed blade that you can pop in your pocket or put on your belt in a very low, low key way, uh, in an EDC way. Think of all the little tops knives. Think of all the little knives out there. And it's the Mora Eldris from like five years ago or three years ago. The Mora Eldris, this big, bulbous, cute, and I'm sure very useful, uh, Scandi ground, little stumpy little knife that's round and fat, that's supposed to be hung around your neck. Okay, I love neck knives. Why this? Why this? But, I, well, that's what people love. So congratulations, Mora. So this morning, I click on uh, I click on Knife News to see what the next reader's poll was. And the latest one is not a spider coat. It's not a Benchmade. It's a fox that looks exactly like a Benchmade. So now we're talking about the new, uh, the best new slip joint of 2020. It's called the Fox Nauta, and it's based on an Italian nautical knife that originally has a marlin spike on the back, you know, like a real sailing knife. So they got rid of that. They just looked at how uh, Benchmade designed the proper handle, and they copied that. And uh, this is what they came up with. And this is the best slip joint of 2020, a copy of the best slip joint of 2017. People, come on. All it takes is a few minutes on Knife News every day. And you'll see that the world is much larger than Spyderco and Benchmade. I know at this point you're like saying, Bob, you preach into the choir, and I don't need to hear your, your, your self-righteous uh, moralizing about this. But I just was a little disappointed. I felt like 2020, more than any other year, just had just so many knives come out. And to keep kind of going back to the same, same trough, uh, I don't know, a little disappointing. But... Uh, it's kind of in my nature and my family's nature to rant. And it's sometimes uh, you got to kind of let it off. So there you go, dad, Vic, this was my knife rant. Uh, so you heard me, you heard me get passionate and sentimental about knives over this past uh, knife life news. You tell us, you tell us what knives you're excited about or, or, or what sticks in your craw about what knife companies are doing uh, or, <laughs> or as I did, what knife, People are selecting for their favorites. It's like, that's any of my business, whatever. Uh, but tell us what knives you're excited about. Call the listener line, 724-466-4487. 724-466-4487. You don't have to leave your name. It'd be awesome. You could say, hey, I'm Bob uh, from California. And, uh, you know, I like knives that don't rust or something like that. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It'll all go into a montage eventually and we'll show it. So, uh, oh, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm going long here. But uh, before we get to my 10 most carried tactical knives in 2020, uh, I want to talk very quickly. It's a very quick tip of the week. Uh, it's something that I've been doing recently because one of, the, one of the benefits of having this channel, excuse me, and the podcast is that people send me knives as gifts. And at first I did a lot of, oh, no, I can't accept this. Then eventually I got tired of that. I'm like, I can accept this because what a beautiful knife. <laughs> and uh, I need to know what I'm talking about. And so I, I've gotten a couple of knives as gifts. You know, I've given a lot away as giveaway knives and stuff like that. But some have come expressly as gifts to me. And uh, those are knives I will never, ever get rid of. You know, I talk about that a lot on the show, gift knives, uh, whether they come from a buddy at work or from my beloved wife or from my parents or from... Uh, people who watch the show or knife makers. A knife that comes to me as a gift will always, always stay in my collection. But now I'm starting to get to the to an advanced age, A and B. I got a lot of knives, and uh, the way I the way I set them up in my knife case, they're kind of set up in order of importance. But 
I am now starting to write down for each knife why I still have it. Uh, whether it's just, I love this design, cool design. I'll never be able to afford a Gus Cicini knife or never will I be inclined to buy one even if I can. So I'll save this ZT. Uh, so it's that kind of thing. But really the purpose of this is, uh, you know, I bought this knife from Greg Lightfoot after our interview. Uh, we had this conversation about making this knife, blah, blah, blah. Um, I bought this knife, my pocket check today, from Zelric42 after doing a couple of uh, Thursday night knives and blah, blah, blah. And just to kind of tell the story. So A, I don't forget because it's likely to happen with a lot of these materials moving in and out. But B, uh, it's just a, a good a good thing to have down down the line. You know, there might come a time where I'm like, oh, I should sell some knives. And then I might be, eh, maybe not this one. This was a gift because of X, Y, Z. I should remember that. And uh, so anyway, catalog your knives, write it down. Um, you know, and, and even if it's a matter of just writing down why you want to keep it, it's kind of an interesting uh, uh, exercise. You know, I love modern tantos and this modern tanto has a swedge or whatever it is so there you go that's my tip of the week write it down all right next my most carried modern tactical knives in 2020 and now uh this uh is inspired by the end of the year videos all of my favorite people start doing this and start talking about their favorite uh uh, their, their most carried knives in 2020 now for me i'm going to break it down because i didn't want to have slip joints in this because everything rotates so much. So I figured I'd break it down to my front right pocket, which always happens to be uh, modern tactical uh, knives, and uh, with the exception of one belt knife. And then, uh, and then uh, slip joints, I'll do, the, I'll do those next week. And these are not necessarily in a particular order, though I think, I, I, I think I've kind of ordered them a little bit. Uh, but before we get there, I wanna do a couple of runners up. Um, and, and these have to do with the fact that they haven't been in the collection for very long, but this off grid knives scorpion is, uh, part of their elite series. And this is a, uh, designed by Kerry Orifice and, and produced by we knives. So knowing that we knives is the one, uh, we knife is the one who made this. This is one of those cases where you like, if you like the design, you know, that it's an awesome knife. Uh, and I love this design and carrying this knife has been a pleasure. And this is one of those gift knives. Uh, Carrie gave this to me. And if I didn't like it, I could say, um, thanks, Carrie. This is awesome. Make a video about it and then forget about it. But I keep bringing it up. I know I keep mentioning it. And uh, I, I think it's partially because it's unexpected and unexpectedly lovely knife because I'm not so into the titanium frame lock, lock flippers right now. And uh, I love that blade. Something about it is evocative of the of the SOCOM Elite. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna place them down kind of randomly. I'm not gonna try and make it look too pretty. So that's one of them. That's a that's a uh, and also ran a runner up because it's too new, uh, <laughs> too new. So I'll put the runners up and then I'll clear them and then and then I'll go to the others. Um, next is uh, where is it? Oh God, this knife. The American Blade Works Model 1, version 5. This also uh, was a gift from the maker. This uh, was created by Michael Martin, uh, who is a guest of the podcast. And this uh, particular knife has really been shaking up the knife world. I've seen so many great reviews of it. Oh, let's see the left-handed skills. So many great reviews of this thing. And, uh, and then um, I got a couple in hand to uh to try out uh tier tier one sent me uh justin sent me a couple and uh a, a, a version three and a version four this is a version five and man it's an incredible knife if you can't see what i'm looking <laughs> at what i'm showing off it's a drop point blasted blade um with a beautifully contoured g10 black g10 handle and a fantastic flipping action and uh, he home makes these home makes he makes these uh, in his in his shop and he's a one man band and he sent it to me and he said, if there's anything I can change, let me know. That's the kind of guy you're dealing with with him. Uh, he's he's a, a very, very nimble knife maker. He's he's already on version five of his model one. 
And then the third runner up is today's EDC. I've been carrying this a lot. Uh, that's the Strider SMF concealed carry. So these are the runners up, but let's get to the 10 most carried. I'm gonna close them on screen just cause how cool does that look? Okay, on screen, you're like, I'm listening. What do I care about on screen? All right, let's start with number 10. My attention to detail mercantile Mark One. Now, uh, if you have watched uh, the um, uh, the town halls and also uh, the two podcasts, we've had uh, uh, Douglas Esposito. He's a Virginia knife maker and Brazilian jiu-jitsu studio owner. Uh, he makes these beautiful knives. I got my very first custom knife from him. It was a fixed blade. Still is a fixed blade. It's in my cabinet. I'd show it otherwise. Uh, but I love his work. And then he started developing this knife, the Mark I. And uh, to me, it's kind of uh, it's kind of on the same shelf as a Strider or a um, uh, Hinderer. It's a big, beefy, beautiful, handmade knife. And uh, Douglas has a very, 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 very promising future, man. This this thing is incredible. Well, man, a very promising present. <laughs> so I've been carrying this quite a bit this year. I bought this after uh, after the April. Um, uh, Knife Junkie Town Hall. He was a guest. Next is the only belt knife, uh, but it, I've EDC'd it quite a bit. And uh, it's this Topps Rapid Strike. What a great knife. So this is a slender and slim kind of shank-like knife. Uh, drop point. I got it double-edged. You can opt for that. And uh, this thing is just small thin, light, and comfortable to carry. Now, when it came to me, as it comes, uh, they carve the the uh, the butt of the handle here, the pommel, into a pyramidal-shaped glass breaker. And it was just very uncomfortable. What I, I like to do this, you know, put my thumb right there, cap the, uh, cap the back of the handle when it's in reverse grip, and that's kind of this kind of knife. And uh, so I ground that off. That's not a uh, glitch on their part. It's just a personal preference thing on my part. And actually, I might even carve off, I might even grind a little bit more off the back of this. Um, also a personal preference thing. I like short handle fixed blades uh, for EDC. And then as you can see, they got this little bolt in there to, uh, to fit into the sheath. Jimping all the way around the handle. <laughs> Nicely excessive. I like it. So great knife, this uh, Topps Rapid Strike. Sheath out of there. All right, next is the old uh, ZT0640, an Ernest Emerson design. This is uh, based off the, the Viper, uh, a slightly larger uh, knife. It's an Emerson. I think it was a, wait, it was one of the very earliest Emerson tactical knives. And then they came back and did a version of the Viper a few years back as a signature series. Uh, those are kind of handmade more expensive and signed knives that Emerson does every year. They'll pull a design out of the vault or make a new design and uh, and feature it in a limited run. This is a ZT version and man alive. As you would expect from ZT, it's just so awesome. I love the understated kind of a, a design here. To me, it fits on the same shelf with a Sebenza. Um, it's kind of that uh, classic understated design. Beautiful. I love how it wedges up uh, right before the blade here. It kind of widens. So if you have to thrust it, uh, you know, it, it, presumably that'll stop your hands from riding up on the blade. Uh, it comes with a, with a, with a split pea soup green carbon fiber scales on them, which at first I thought were cool, but I just don't like carbon fiber. I didn't mind the color. I'm just not a fan of the, of the material. So I got, uh, I got these um, natural tan canvas micarta handles. And uh, this knife is awesome. It's also, like many Emerson designs, an incidental uh, front flipper. Oh, there you go. Next, we have the Spiderco Spidey Chef. What? The Spidey Chef? Yes. Once I had Mike Emler modify it. Mike Emler, also a guest of the show. Um, I had him clip. Well, I first sent it to him because I wanted him to sharpen it because I've never been able to get my Spidey Chef, with, which is LC200N. Never been able to get it uh, 
sh adequately sharp for my for my taste. So I sent it to him. He put an incredible, you know, hand hand uh, hand edge on it using stones, and I asked him to clip off the tip to make it more of a thruster. He had me draw the angle I wanted cut, and then he cut it, and then he get, did this beautiful medium tumble. All right, uh, I'm not sure what medium it is, but some sort of a stone wash, and he does it for 24 hours, and it's, man, it's, it's just beautiful, beautiful work. And then I had him leave the handle alone because I love, I love the titanium treatment on these Spidey Chefs, and I love all the snail trails and, and uh, experience lines on it. Uh, next is the, oh, 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 oh. Uh, <clears throat> the Hinderer XM18 No Choil Warncliffe DLT exclusive. Yes, that's the longest name of any of the knives I'm showing today. Uh, this thing, incredible. It came out, uh, I believe, in 2020, early 2020. I am a huge fan of the, um, the Warncliffe shape of uh, that Hinderer does. I have a beautiful XM24, which I believe XM24, that, that length, the four inch length, allows the hinderer shapes to fully express themselves to their absolute beauty. So I think all of the three and a half inch hinderers are, are beautiful, but just, just slightly less <laughs> than the larger ones. I think the, the extra space allows them to express the lines fully. Blah, blah, blah. But in any case, uh, I love the no choil aspect of this. That's what really that's what really brought me in. And then um, this is 20 CV steel. I also could not get this adequately sharp. So I sent it to Jared Neve at Neve's Knives, who also uh, uses stones and, and his hands to sharpen knives. And he put a beautiful edge on this thing. So um, this one got a lot of pocket time this year, this year of 2020. Uh, weird, weird parallax view, I think, with the camera. Um, but this still is the largest. Uh, next, the Benchmade bug out. Yes, the Benchmade bug out. I always have this thing on me. It's either in my waistband or in my jacket. Right now, it's wearing a Snaggletooth uh, uh, MF. They make the Snaggletooth uh, in a small version that fits the Rat One or the Rat Two. It fits the bug out. This one I bought the. I got the. I didn't buy this. Rob Penna sent it to me. Uh, it's the blue anodized version. I absolutely love it. It works great. It matches the anodization on uh, the blue that comes with it beautifully. And then it's also wearing the, uh, the Snaggletooth engagement ring, which is not a karambit fixture, but it's sort of like a solid lanyard or fob. It's for, it's for, pulling, it's for pulling your knife out of your pocket, basically. And it's especially handy with these deep carry pocket clips. So I've been trying this out. I'm going to make a video of this soon, tell you what I think about that. So yeah, the bug out, not necessarily in this configuration, definitely with these uh, micarta handles, but this was one of the most carried this year. Next, this was on me a lot, the Microtech Troodon. Uh, this is the three inch bladed version of the Troodon. Well, the combat Troodon is the four inch. So this is the Troodon, uh, serrated on the back edge and uh, plain edge on the front, just like my <laughs> my drywall dagger. Uh, love this thing. And I carry this a lot in my waistband in appendix carry. I know it sounds dangerous because if it fired out, you know, with appendix carry, what would be damaged? But this thing is not going to just fire out on its own. And uh, I, I, it's a very, very, very pleasing knife. And I think that's part of why I carry it. Now, also, I, res I, I sort of resurrected this. I, I bought it from a guy who didn't tell me it had all sorts of weird spring sound. It has that spring ting sound and, and it would, you know, false fire a lot. And so I, I did some research and figured out how to fix it. I mean, just, I didn't even open it. I just flushed it out, did a couple of, did a protocol that they uh, suggested on the Microte Microtech website and turned this into a great, great little uh, out the front. And it's excellent uh, in the waistband as a little backup knife. So that's how I've been carrying it. Um, three more, three more. Next. Oh man, this is probably the most carried in the last two or three years or two years anyway. Emerson Sachs. Love the Emerson Sachs. Now this is another knife I, I had. Oh, so sorry. This is, 
It's all falling apart, people. It's all coming apart here. This is another knife that I asked uh, Jared Neve to sharpen, and he did a beautiful job. I mean, this, of course, is an Emerson, so it's in 154 CM and chisel. And 154 gets so screaming sharp, and chisel blades are just intensely sharp. And, well, Jared is an excellent sharpener, and so this is insanely sharp. I have the uh, MXG gear pocket clip, uh, deep carry clip on there. And it leaves just a very discreet little amount above the above the pocket line. I like a little bit above the pocket line so I can actually grab it and use it. So uh, one, of, one of my prized Emersons, I just love that thing. That's one of those uh, Emersons I'd love to have an actual uh, custom version of. Next is the other fixed blade on the menu. And that was that is the Copes Designs Ed Calderon Elvia. And it uh, has this really cool sheath with that hook on it. That's so you can drop it into your pocket uh, and have it loose in there. And then when you pull it out of your pocket, this hooks on kind of like a wave, kind of like the fixed version of a wave. And then here, I'm gonna take it off screen so I don't slice my finger. And then what do you remove? But this beautiful tactical fruit knife designed by Ed Calderon and created by uh, by uh, Copus Design. Uh, Copus Design Works. Anyway, this thing, uh, I carry it because, uh, well, A, I love it. B, it's light and thin. And C, if I really actually needed a tactical knife, this would be the easiest thing to access. And it would uh, also require the least amount of fine motor skills, you know, to, to use. Uh, it, it's one thing to carry a knife like this on you, but actually draw it in duress and open it and and bring it to bear. Uh, well, it's a lot of steps. It's a lot of steps for nervous hands to deal with. So uh, this really is a, a pretty quick solution if you need to get a knife in your hands. And I just think it's such a beautiful design. I love that weird angle. Lastly, the most carried knife of 2020, even though I got it halfway through the year. The Spartan Harzi Folder. Oh my God. Oh my goodness gracious, what a beautiful knife this is. Anything uh, Bill Harsey puts his hands to is beautiful to me, is appealing to me. He just designs gorgeous, gorgeous knives. And I got to get my hands on some of his fixed blades. But when this came out, I knew I had to have it. And it took me a few years to actually come around to it. But it has all of the features of the many other knives I love, like the Hinderers and the Striders. And, uh, and such, and um, uh, Chris Reeve knives, but it's in this beautifully designed Bill Harsey package, Bill Harsey design package. And then on top of that, made in North Carolina by the fine folk at Spartan Blades. What cool guys. Uh, I've spoken to Bill Harsey on the show. I've also spoken to uh, uh, Curtis Iovito on the show, and uh, they're both great guys. As you notice, a lot of these knives uh, have a personal connection because to me now I'm very interested in carrying the knives of the people I speak with because they mean more to me now. So after my interview with uh, Curtis Iovito, he said, Hey, send me your uh, Spartan Harzi and, and your logo and we'll engrave the logo in the handle for you. And what a sweet and awesome, nice thing to do. And uh, boy, <laughs> either advertently or inadvertently, he turned this into just about my favorite uh, folder. So there you have it. Those are my 10 most carried knives of 2020 uh, in the front right pocket or with the with the exception of the rapid strike, which was tucked in my belt. Uh, so there you have it. Most carried knives. Thanks for watching that. Uh, it felt good to get out. It felt good to say. And uh, well, now I have a couple of knives I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I want to get the Jason Knight uh, uh, folding kukri uh, a tactical elements. Really want to get that. I want to get that Terravantium uh, bladed uh, Terrain 365 STSAT. Uh, so I have, uh, now that No New Knife November is over, I have a whole bunch of things I want to get, but it's Christmas season and I have to buy stuff for other people. It's so funny. In December, I every year I'm like, God, I, I always come up with all the things I want for myself in December. And uh, boy, <laughs> I've become a materialist, but, but I've, I've really, I've been working on, on trying to chill, chill it out. So anyway, that brings us to the conclusion 
of the Knife Junkie Podcast Supplemental Episode Number One Seventy One. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for su your support. Thank you for listening. If you're listening, and uh, uh, I'm honored to be going another into another year. This will be our third year we've started of the Knife Junkie Podcast. And it's great to have you all along. Don't forget to call the listener line, 724-466-4487, to let us know uh, what new knives you're excited about, what knife you're carrying, give us a pocket check. Whatever it is, just check in. And uh, we'd love to get your get your voice up on this show. Uh, also, uh, as the holidays come to uh, uh, scream up at us, don't forget Knife Junkie merch. Now, uh, uh, we have, uh, Jim has designed a whole new line of really cool stuff. Uh, Jim, do you have that liner? Can we, can we roll that in right here? Or uh, is that something we do later? Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase. And now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long sleeve tee, or on a pillow, coaster, tote bag, coffee mug, water bottle, sticker, pen, or apron. And with COVID-19, you definitely need a don't take dull for an answer face covering. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie with your don't take dull for an answer merchandise. Get yours at www www.thenifejunkie.com forward slash dull. That's www.thenifejunkie.com forward slash dull. I like that forward slash dull. Uh, love that liner. Thank you, man. That, that looks, that looks, that looks awesome. So, uh, yeah, don't take dull for an answer. Go check out that merch. Um, and, uh, uh I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing the same. Everyone's going to be like, oh, thanks for the sweatshirt, Bob. So uh, thank you, Jim, for coming up with that new line of, of awesome fashion wear, Knife Junkie fashion wear, and uh, go check it out. And uh, well, psh, I'm, I'm sitting here kind of waffling because I, I don't want to say goodbye, but I'm going to say goodbye. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, and if you haven't noticed, it's looking better and better each week. He keeps bringing on new elements. Awesome job. Thank you, Jim. And for myself, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'd like to say, uh, just like that liner said, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.